I'm just gonna come right out and say that I am and have always been very skeptical of electric powered off-road vehicles. Unless it offers a user experience that's as good or better than its gas powered counterpart, I'm just not interested. Now, I don't want to put words in their mouths, but it seems to me the guys behind the electric vehicle brand Taiga Motors must feel the same way I do. Their approach to designing and building electric powered off-road vehicles is as much focused on performance, excitement, and overall ease of ownership as it is on being green. We first came across Taiga when they released their electric powered snowmobile, the TS3. Now I have to say, of all the vehicles out there that you could add electric power to, a snowmobile seems to me that it should be the last one on your list. Snowmobiles operate in extreme temperatures. Their engines experience significant load as the surface they operate on soaks up energy like a sponge. It just seemed a bit crazy to me for a company to come to market with an electric snowmobile as their first release. Then I got to thinking about it and realized that this move was actually kind of genius. If you think about it, if you can build a viable electric snowmobile, anything you want to produce after that in the off-road world would be comparatively easy. So the concept of electric snowmobile versus other product lines is quite interesting because at the beginning of Taiga, we're hesitating uh, with the electric snowmobile, should it be our first our first product because you know it's a pretty target niche market you've got side by sides a much bigger market we consider doing that first uh, but for us the snowbills were close at heart you know we grew up on them uh, we're in Canada so we wanted to electrify those first and as well from an engineering standpoint it's really interesting because snowbills are maybe one of the most challenging for a powertrain application for the motors for the batteries you know they're really cold really high power to weight ratio requirements uh, so we knew if we could develop the tech for a snowmobile, it would translate well to other vehicles like the personal watercraft. So that was our thinking behind it and our goal was always at the beginning when we were developing the electric vehicles and the powertrain platform was this kind of platform approach where we designed it not only for winter applications but for summer applications from the beginning. Uh, so this is kind of proving it out with the electric watercraft where actually the same components that you'd find in the snowmobile are what's powering this watercraft. So that's what enables us to kind of reduce production costs uh, and make these affordable electric vehicles. Now, based on the state of the market, I would have expected Taiga's next release to be either an electric powered ATV or side-by-side -side to complement their snowmobile. But clearly, these guys are bigger thinkers than I am. Instead of a wheeled vehicle, they introduced the Orca electric powered watercraft instead. And if you stop to think about it once again, this makes perfect sense. Not only is it comparatively easy to do when you compare it to a snowmobile, but the power system that worked in the snowmobile would be more than capable of powering a watercraft. Plus, it's a market that, while not necessarily growing, is pretty stable in overall sales and is much more accepting of new concepts and designs. Yeah, so we started um, uh, with like kind of a conversion and we took our powertrain from one of our early snowmobiles, popped it into a gas PWC, did some initial benchmark testing to see if the concept was valid, uh, to see if we could get enough range out of it. Uh, turned out really you know, really well. We went out to a bunch of lakes and we found out that most people it satisfied their range demands um, uh, per, for, for the day out in the water and it was great to just charge overnight. And then th there were quite a few challenges because you know you go from building something that was meant to operate at minus 40 degree temperatures, then you go on a lake, it's maybe 35 Celsius, higher than that. You've got a lot of water everywhere so your system needs to be really well sealed. Uh, but especially the, the high temperatures and the high vibrations when you're jumping off waves you don't have any suspension you land big shock impacts so those reverberate through the entire uh, battery and the powertrain as well so we had a lot of kind of tuning to do on that to, to make uh, especially in the battery pack be able to absorb like continuous high impact loads without affecting the life cycle of the battery yeah so we're releasing three models of the orca watercraft um, uh, in different performance brackets so we've got the entry level model starting at fifteen thousand dollars you get 120 horsepower of that one and a 20 kilowatt hour battery pack. And you have a more performance model starting at $17,500. And then that one gets a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack and up to 180 horsepower. So you get a bit more range and significantly more power as well. So uh, the top speed on that one will go up to 104 kilometers an hour. And then we have the third really high end edition, which is a carbon fiber with a carbon fiber hull. So you get an even lighter watercraft, same 180 horsepower, but really top of the line performance and full customization on, the, on your kind of colors and seating arrangement that you would like to have. The electric watercraft actually has a quite broad audience, um, uh, especially on lake use at cottages. It's a great application. We can get up to two hours of range per charge. So you can, you can go out, you can have fun on the lake uh, without disturbing any neighbors, it's very quiet. Uh, very hassle-free use case, so you, you plug in, you charge, you unplug, and 
you know, you don't have to go get gas in the town, bring it back, fuel it to the dock. So we want a hassle-free application on these. So pretty, pretty broad market. It's not for everyone. Some people on the oceans, you know, go for, for hours at a time. Not quite there yet, uh, but really targeting the, those like lake users and especially also kind of more in the, in the yachting community in Europe and open up this market to people that maybe stop buying PWCs because of their perceived environmental impact. And so we're able to kind of broaden the overall market and get new users on board. We were set up to test ride Taiga snowmobile at the end of last winter, but world pandemics got in the way. After things calmed down, we were able to arrange a test ride of their Orca watercraft at our world headquarters. Yeah, so there's some great kind of unique technological things on the software and electronics side uh, that we are pulling from the latest in automotive to try and really elevate power sports in that respect. Uh, one being, you know, the high definition display is in the center console. You have uh, mapping that's integrated directly into the vehicles. So you can, you can trace out your route. You can see where you've gone in the day. If you've discovered some great spots, you can go back and see that. You have a cell phone app that's connected through Bluetooth. So if you have kids going out on your unit, you can restrict the power and lock it for them to be safer as well. And then we have actually remote updates on uh, all their vehicle platforms. So that's really cool. They're LTE connected. Um, you can pull data from them. You can do remote diagnostics. So if you have a problem on your vehicle, you can call up your dealer. They can connect to your vehicle at a distance and often diagnose a problem without even ever having to bring it in. And then as well, if they have direct link to the Taiga factory, so they can call us up, we can flash some new code from a distance and uh, upgrade the vehicles. Remember at the beginning when I said an electric vehicle has to provide an overall user experience that's as good or better than its gas-powered counterpart before I'd even consider it? I meant that. And I'm hoping the seriousness of that statement gives adequate emphasis to this next one. Tyga's Orca watercraft is awesome. Let that sink in for a minute. The model we tested was still a prototype. It had 120 horsepower and the smaller capacity battery, but it still had the full carbon fiber hull. It also didn't have Tyga's latest edition of their in-house design jet pump. The programming for the power system was not final and full power mode was glitchy. However, none of these things took away from the overall experience of riding the Orca. Power was immediate and felt every bit as strong, if not more so than a gas-powered watercraft with similar horsepower. In the middle of the three power modes, the Orca was playful and snappy. The sensation of riding a watercraft and hearing nothing but the whine of an electric motor and the water splashing around you was unique in itself. But sitting in the water completely silent, then grabbing the throttle and accelerating forward with serious urgency was just plain weird in the best possible way. Letting go of the throttle and coming to a complete silent stop was equally as strange, but also really cool. All of the unique electric-only experiences you get with the Orca are definitely cool, but these are also things you would get used to the longer you owned it, and they would become less cool over time. It's at that point that if the overall riding experience wasn't as good as a gas-powered watercraft, you'd start to regret buying it. Fortunately for the Orca, that is again not the case. Ridden back-to-back, -back, the overall riding experience is just as good. That's not the end of this story. Consider this, you have a cottage and you visit it say 10 weekends a year with a couple weeks of holidays mixed in between. A gas watercraft requires you to fill and haul gas cans, ensure the battery is charged, get it winterized at the end of the season and alternately get it ready for use at the beginning of the season. If it's a two stroke, you either need to fill it with oil or mix the gas and you're likely gonna have motor issues at some point, they all do. If it's a four stroke, you're gonna need to get the oil changed at least once every other year. Now when you're at the cottage, you're likely to take out your watercraft for about 30 to 40 minutes a couple times a day. That would be a typical usage scenario for your average cottager. Now picture this scenario. At the beginning of the season, you simply pull the Orca out of the garage, charge it up and put it in the water. You don't have to do anything special to it because it doesn't require winterization when you put it away at the end of last season. Just cover it up and store it. You no longer have to worry about gas or oil or oil changes or motor troubles because the electric motor only has one moving part that's completely maintenance free and it comes with a five year powertrain warranty. You take your Orca out for a 40 minute ride which uses up about two thirds of the battery. When you come back for lunch, you put it on the charger and by the time lunch is over, it's back up to 80% more than enough for another hour of riding in the afternoon. Plug it in at night and it's ready to go the next morning. This type of usage scenario highlights exactly why the overall user experience of the Orca is so good. It's fun to ride, cheap to maintain, and easy to use. Now my final question to the guys from Taiga was about cost. Electric vehicles are more expensive than their gas-powered counterparts almost without exception. The base model Orca will retail somewhere around 15,000 US. While slightly more than a gas watercraft, this is actually a very competitive price for a vehicle in this horsepower category. Are there any downsides to owning an Orca? 
In my opinion, no, there's not. Even despite having to have a power outlet professionally installed, the Orca is still the easiest to own and easiest to use watercraft the industry has ever seen. I think the Orca is irrefutable proof that when done right, electric power does have a place in the power sports industry with a big emphasis on done right. Clearly, Taiga gets what it means to do it right. So I'm sure you have, as I did, just one more question. What's next? With a snowmobile and a watercraft being delivered next year, you have to wonder, where does Taiga go from here?